Good evening, this is Bell Geode, and we are back with some Microsoft Flight Simulator X Steam Edition. This is the Vietnam era. Okay, so if you caught last week's episode, we showed off the first of the twins, that being the A6 Intruder. Today, we're going to do the exact same mission, but this time we're going to do it from the point of view of the EA6B Prowler. And as you can hear in the background, I've got it starting up right now. Engine 1 is on, Engine 2 should be on momentarily, and then we'll be ready to take off. So, just to remind you, both of these aircraft were created by Vertavia. I've had them since uh, Vertavia used to be called Alpha Sim. They are available through FSX Steam. So, if you go to the Steam page, the DLC page, you should be able to purchase and download both of these aircraft. And they are pretty damn cool. Okay, so we're in the office now, and I'm going to go ahead and call for takeoff clearance now that both engines are up and running. The intruder should be getting ready momentarily as well. Alright, we're going north. Da Nang Ground, Marine 242, ready to taxi, north departure. Marine 242, taxi 2 and hold short at runway 35, left, using taxiway, whiskey 6, whiskey 1, contact tower on 125.01, ready. Okay. Taxi 2 and hold short, runway 35 left via taxiway Whiskey 6, Whiskey 1, Marine 242. Alright, parking brakes off. And let's get rolling. Of course, I'm going to be telling the story of this aircraft. You already heard most of the story if you watched the uh, A6 version of this. It's pretty much a very similar story. The EA-6B, of course, is a variant of the A-6 that had a very specialized role, which is going to be playing a part in this mission as well. Let me grab the flaps here. Okay, now if I've timed this correctly, by the time I make the turn for the taxiway, uh, the intruder should be getting ready to roll out. Now one of the key differences between this aircraft and the A6 Intruder is the A6 Intruder is a two-seater. Of course they sit side by side and the EA6B Prowler is actually a four-seater. Now the other two seats were occupied by electronic warfare officers so we'll be showing off their seats in a few minutes after we take off and I'm on course basically. Alright, but for now we are going to head to 35 left and of course the magic of editing, you won't have to sit through the entire walk down the taxiway, so to speak. And just on cue, there we go, the intruder is moving out, very nice, very nice, I gotta make sure I stay on the center line here. Oh man, I hate doing views like this because it always messes with my sense of direction. And if you look off in the distance there, you will see some OV-10 Broncos. That was our very first aircraft that we showed off in this Vietnam series here. And there's still a lot more aircraft to come. Some of the best ones I'm saving for last, but you'll know when that happens. Okay, we are almost to our turnoff. And let me just make sure that everything is set. Altimeter should be about right. We still have that thunderstorm off in the distance, so this is going to be a very interesting flight. I'm sure you can hear the thunder in the background here. Just to remind you, in case you did not catch the previous video, this mission is going to involve the A6 intruder dropping bombs on a bunch of MiG-15s over at Hanoi Airport, and the EA6B that I'm currently in is going to be providing electronic warfare. So we're basically going to be jamming all the SAM sites from the shoreline into Hanoi so that the intruder can get their mission done. And looks like he's lollygagging behind. Of course, the he is me. I'm in that plane, too. <laughs> you could thank FS Recorder for that. I love that little program. It's a great way to uh, fly multiple aircraft in the same episode. All right, as we make our turn here, I'm going to bring up the tower. Try not to cut this too sharp here. Okay, there we go. Looking good. As soon as that pops up, I'll call the tower and uh, we'll line up on the runway here. There we go. Da Nang Tower, Marine 242 at runway 35 left, ready for takeoff, departure to the north. Marine 242, cleared for takeoff, runway 35 left, north departure approved. Cool beans. 
Cleared for takeoff, runway 35 left, Marine 242. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get into position, and since this thing is timed to perfection, I need to make sure that the intruder is at the hold short line before I start rolling out. And then I've got like about uh, 15 seconds before he moves on to the runway. Or technically that would be before I move on to the runway. I don't know, it gets confusing after a while. Okay, this is our spot. Intruders in position, as soon as Eagles hold short, we'll go brakes down and throttles up. Okay, that's my cue. And here comes the dirty brown smoke. And we're off! Whoa! Alright, and we're gonna go down to about that taxiway there, and that should be our rotation speed. Right about here should do the trick. Okay, so elevators up. And rotate. Very nice, very nice. I'm going to wait for the next taxiway and gears coming up right now. Flaps coming up. Okay, we are good to go. Tower's going to call to us, but we're going to ignore them. Okay, so just like I did with the A6 Intruder, I'm going to be flying a lot of this flight from the other seats in the aircraft. So right now we're in the co-pilot seat, and I'm just about ready to get everything underway. We're going to try and keep it around 2100 feet, but obviously we're going to have to go a little bit higher to get over that hill directly ahead of us. Once we get past there and we're over water, I'll bring it back down to about 2100. But I've already got the autopilot engaged. As you can see on the GPS, we are heading to Kaheo. I love how they come up with these waypoint names. Alright, but a little bit about this aircraft. Um, it is very, very similar to the A6 Intruder as far as the stats go. It can go three knots faster than the A6 Intruder. So the A6 Intruder goes 563 knots, and this sucker can go up to 566 knots. That's maximum speed. Cruise is about the same at 418 knots. Range is roughly the same, about 2,000 miles. And service ceiling is a little bit lower than the A6 Intruder at 37,600. I believe the A6 is rated for like 40,000 maximum. It's got the same exact engine, so that's two Pratt & Whitney J52-P408 Alpha turbojets. So it's basically the same plane, just with slight modifications to the body. Now, as far as the hard points, this sucker can hold, just like the A6, a total of 18,000 pounds. It is known for carrying the AGM-88 Harm anti-radiation missiles, which we do have on our wings right now. It can also carry drop tanks, can be used in a tanker roll, just like the A6. But now the key to this aircraft is the ANALQ-99 tactical jamming system that these guys back here use. Now I'm not sure if Vertavia has this all perfect, like this seat would be for this particular role, the other seat for another role, but the way that I see it here, it looks like this seat is the seat used by the guy that's actually doing the jamming. It's got a pretty damn good view if I should say so myself. And then this other seat here, it looks like there is like an airborne radar, almost like an AWACS type of thing, so I guess that would be good to tell if there's any bogeys up there, which hopefully there shouldn't. Um, I do believe that there is AI activity, however, I highly doubt they're going to come after us, so we should be fine on this mission here. So yeah, there we go, that's what the back looks like. Got the two guys sitting there chilling, basically going along for the ride until it's time to turn on the jammer and music is on. Alright, and as we can see, the intruder has already taken off and is just now getting past the land mass before going over the ocean. This is all stuff that you've seen in the previous episode if you're looking at the inset there. But let me tell you a little bit of the history of this particular aircraft. Um, first off, it first flew on the 25th of May, 1968. 
So obviously it was a little bit later than the A6 Intruder. It was created by Grumman, it's now created by Northrop Grumman, and it is still in service. Even though the A6 has been retired, the EA-6B is still in service. It's in use with the Navy and Marine Corps. In fact, the Marine Corps plans on operating the Prowler till 2019. As we go a little bit further out, let me tell you some more about it. It was originally called the Electric Intruder when it was uh, designated the EA-6A. And it was actually developed for the United States Marine Corps before it was developed for the Navy. It did serve in Vietnam, um, I believe a total of 27 A6 or EA-6As were produced. And those were, of course, sent across the oceans to Nam. So they did see combat there. That was basically their first engagement. Now the EA-6B, which is the model that uh, we're flying right now, that had more advanced avionics for the time and was primarily built as an air electronic warfare aircraft. That was the main goal for it. Of course, with the ability to fire the AGM-88 Harm missiles, as you can see, this thing definitely took a bit of an offensive role, not just a standard defensive role. If you look in the inset, you'll see that the intruder is starting to catch up with us, and we are just about near Morel, so we should be seeing the Nimitz and her fleet. As a matter of fact, there's one right now. That's the frigate that's currently following the Nimitz. So which means, if we turn around here, we should see the Nimitz off in the distance here. And just like before, it's going to be sitting here facing north until we are ready to come back and land. And then it's going to do a 180 degree turn and we're going to land while it's heading south. Now, if I also remember correctly, the last time that I did this mission, I went past the Nimitz and past the frigate in front of the Nimitz before pulling up. Now, the intruder is going to stay here at 2100 feet, just like in the last video. However, we are going to be going up to 21,000 feet. Or Angels 21. So as soon as I see that frigate, that should be my cue to start pulling up. Any second now. Okay, we are just about good to go. There's the frigate. Alright, now it's time to go up. We're going to go full throttle here. We're lucky we should see the intruder underneath us. You can already see us pulling up in the inset there. And there it is, center screen going to the bottom. Let's see if we can get a better view there. See, there we go. So one twin is going up, the other twin staying down. Very nice. And as soon as we reach altitude, we'll have our backseaters start the jamming process so that this guy can get to landfall without getting shot down. There are a bunch of neat things about this aircraft uh, that have developed over the years. One of which is, if you look at the little um, fuel probe ahead of us here, it's actually crooked. It's actually bent to the right a little bit because there's an antenna near the root. And of course, I'm sure you notice the big, huge antenna and electronic warfare pod on the tail. That's very distinctive. In addition to which, the canopy of this aircraft, you'll notice it has a slightly yellow hue. It's actually got gold in there to protect the crew against radio emissions that the electronic warfare equipment produces. So <laughs> we have to have protection from our own gear, basically. But I think that's pretty cool. It gives it a nice shimmer to it. Now, I actually had one viewer say that uh, this is like their dream business jet, so to speak. They would love to have like a business jet version of this, minus all the, the bells and whistles, but at least outfitted for luxury travel around the U.S. And honestly, I think that's an excellent idea. <laughs> I'm 100% down for that. So yeah, that would be a good thing. Okay. Little bit of the operational history of this aircraft. The EA-6B entered service with Fleet Replacement Squadron VAQ-129 in September of 1970 and a Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 132, or VAQ-132. That became the first operational squadron in July 1971. 
All right, we are getting ready to turn on our jammers here. We'll have to pretend that the jammers come on because since this is a Vertavia plane, it looks pretty nifty, but there's not a whole hell of a lot of functionality. That's one downside to Vertavia aircraft that I have noticed. So right now our jammers are on and we are broadcasting to the world. And by the way, the aircraft that we are flying is a part of VMAQ-1 affectionately known as the Banshees. And that was the first uh, Marine Corps electronic warfare squadron that ever existed. So these guys have been around for a while. As far as their history goes, uh, they served in the Korean War, the Vietnam War, Operation Desert Storm, Operation Northern Watch, Operation Southern Watch. Literally, they've been everywhere. They were even in Iraqi freedom and enduring freedom. So, yeah, these guys have a very long history with this aircraft. Now, the squadron actually started out by flying the uh, A-4 Sky Raider, or variant thereof, called the AD-4 Sky Raider. And eventually they moved on to the EA-6A Electric Intruder, which of course was the predecessor to this particular version of the Prowler. And eventually they got into the Prowler and have been flying it ever since, essentially. They're based out of Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point in North Carolina, and they're currently designated a training squadron. So they're going to be flying this sucker until about 2019. Okay. Right down below, we've got North Vietnam, and Hanoi's in the distance. So we're going to be going to the NAH, that's November Alpha Hotel Waypoint. Once we get there, we're going to weave all kind of funky patterns across the skies as we jam every living thing down there. Well, maybe not every living thing, but, you know, every missile, battery, and radar site, and all of that good jazz there. Oh, by the way, just to show you how badass these guys really are in this squadron, they've won the Marine Corps Aviation Association Squadron of the Year from 1995 to 2010, with very few years in between that they didn't win it. These guys are total badasses. Just so you don't think that this plane is a one-trick pony, not only do they do electronic warfare as their primary mission, not only do they do SEED, or suppression of enemy air defenses with the AGM-88 harm missiles, but this thing also does photo recon. So, while our buddy is down there going to do his bombing run, one of the things that we could potentially do is overfly the airport and do BDA, or bomb damage assessment, which is essentially taking a whole bunch of pictures to make sure that those guys actually hit the target. That was something that they did in Vietnam, and in addition, post-Vietnam, they flew a lot of sorties in uh, Desert Shield, Desert Storm, doing the same kind of things. You know, the electronic warfare as well as the photo recon. But especially in Vietnam, that was a very crucial mission for them, because they needed to know just how well the war was going. They needed eyes in the sky, so to speak. Alright, we are going to make our turn around here, and we're going to do like a loose orbit, but we're going to try to be not very predictable, because even though the jammers are on, there's always the option for, you know, our enemy to just basically start launching missiles, or if they've got some heavy caliber AAA, you know, they could shoot up some flak up here. And that would end our day real quick if we decide to fly a predictable pattern. So I'm going to basically be pulling to the left, pulling to the right for like the next 10 minutes or so. I won't be showing you all of that because obviously you don't really want to see that. That's just 10 minutes of flying around like a crazy person. But we will definitely pick it up as soon as the intruder has completed the mission, which you can refer to the previous video for that. Alright, uh, let's see... I can't even see the intruder down there. I know they should be directly below us because we're going around the same speed. And even though we are just about going in the opposite direction from the way that they're heading, uh, they should be just about on the ingress right now. So if you recall last week's video, this would be about the point where I get over the river and start jinking to the left and to the right as we make our way in. So we'll wait for them to finish.
Okay, it is now 10 minutes later, and our intruder went bombs away, got good hits on the target, we were able to confirm, and it's time to head back to the Nimitz. So the Nimitz should be doing its 180 return in a few minutes, and we are just going to go downwind, and then we're going to do our carrier break and come in. But for now, we're going to rejoin with our buddy here. So let me go outside. There we go. We're going to stay in a loose trail formation as we make our way in. When we're about 30 miles out from the carrier, that is our cue to come down to about 2,000 feet. And then we can go ahead and do our pass on a carrier, our carrier break, come around and land. Just so you're aware ahead of time, you will not see the intruder landing in this one. You will only see the prowler landing, and that's a limitation that I have. Alright, uh, where is he? I see the smoke. Aha! There he is. See him in a little corner window there. Okay, perfect. We are in position, and we are on time. So, if you're watching the GPS, which, by the way, this thing has two GPS is in it. That's like standard for this aircraft. But if you're watching the GPS, you'll see in the upper right hand corner we're at 45 nautical miles out. As soon as we get to 30, that's when we're going to start coming down. So what else can I tell you about this uh, lovely little bird here? Uh, one of the missions that it did do in Vietnam, and did quite well actually, it flew escort for the B-52 bombers. Yeah, the buff. The big, huge B-52s that did all the carpet bombing on Hanoi. This plucky little bird flew escort for them. Couldn't believe it when I actually found out about it, but wow. This thing is like a jack of all trades, it would seem. And while the intruder is definitely the more famous of the two, the more I learn about this aircraft, the more I'm really starting to enjoy it. Okay, we are at the magic number 30, and you can already see Morel Waypoint up ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and disengage the altitude hold, and we're going to start bringing this bird down. The intruder should also start coming down any second, too. Alright, so we're just going to go straight. I can't see the carrier. Oh, wait, wait, hold that thought. I think I can see the carrier dead ahead. Of course, that's probably because the clouds have not yet materialized. As I said in the last video, that's a quirk with FSX is at a certain distance, clouds don't generate. So you have to actually get closer to see them, which can be a bit of a pain. Alright, but be that as it may, I don't believe I will need the co-pilot seat. And actually, I keep calling him a co-pilot, but technically it's an electronic countermeasures officer. So basically the crew consists of one pilot and three electronic countermeasures officers. Not really a co-pilot per se. So he's not doing much flying there, he's just basically going along for the ride and, you know, they be jamming. Alright, uh, we are coming down pretty swiftly. We're just about over 14,000 right now. Let's see what everything looks like outside and see if we can see the carrier. Okay, there's a the carrier. Looks like they just completed our turn. Uh, we are a little off-center. I'm not sure how that happened, but I'm going to need to adjust accordingly as we get a little bit lower. And here comes that fog. Lovely. Okay, so we're passing the frigate now. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I need to swing out to the right a little bit and then back out to the left. So I'm going to stay in the outside view here so that I can line up properly. Uh, from all appearances, it looks like the intruder's already at altitude, so I need to hurry up. I'm the slacker here. Okay, there's our carrier, so we're going to go past the stern swing out a little bit to the left. Now I am coming down relatively fast so I will need to put out the speed brakes. That will happen as soon as we pass the carrier here. Okay, there we go. We should be lined up now so I'm going to go ahead and pull out the speed brakes. That will slow us down considerably so that way we can do our carrier brake before we pass that uh, cruiser up ahead there. That's kind of like my marker, so to speak. 
Wow, look at that lightning. Jeez, still impressive. Okay, uh, I think we are slow enough now, so I've gone ahead and put in the speed brakes, and we're going to get ready to make our turn here. So this is our carrier brake. A little more speed brakes should do the trick, because I am coming in somewhat fast. I want to keep it below 200 knots here. Okay, now we're looking good. Alright, so there's the carrier. I'm glad some of these clouds dissipated because this will make this landing a lot easier than the A6 landing was. But yeah, we are making our way around. I want to go 180 degrees, so basically we're going to be going past the carrier. I'm also using that destroyer to the left to help me line up. Alright, back in the cockpit. Uh, let me see if I can crane my head around here and get an idea where exactly this carrier is in relation to where we are. There it is. Okay, we are not quite lined up, so I need to go a little bit more to the left here. This never gets old, folks. This never gets old. I absolutely love doing virtual naval aviation. I wish that my life would have worked out that I could have done this for real. However, this will do in a pinch. Okay, and we are just about parallel, so I'm going to go ahead and drop the tail hook now. And we're also going to get the flaps down one notch. I do notice that this tail hook goes down a little bit lower than the A6 Intruders does. I don't know if that is a Vertavia thing, or if that's actually the real design of the plane, where the tail hook was, you know, a little bit longer than the A6. I know that this aircraft itself is a little bit longer than the A6, too. So that may have something to do with it. The length of this aircraft was, it was about uh, 59 feet 10 inches, as opposed to the intruder, which was 54 feet and 7 inches. Alright, uh, gear is coming down now. And we should be just about ready to go to our base leg here. Okay, there should still be that frigate behind, so let me see if I can eyeball that. It's out here somewhere. Well, there's a carrier, at least. Okay, frigate. I see the wake of the frigate. Yeah, there he is. Okay. So I got the frigate. That is my marker. We're going to turn around there. Hopefully I can get this landing done in one shot. I did a pretty good job on the A6, except I was a little wobbly near the end. So I'm hoping that I can actually do a better job landing this one. So this is a slightly heavier aircraft, just saying. I do, however, have less gas than I did in the intruder, so I'm hoping I don't go bingo before I actually have to come in, because otherwise I probably have enough for one go around. That's not going to be pretty, let me tell you. Okay, there's our frigate right below us. And carrier, there you are. Okay, so I'm going to start lining up here. We're going to go to the right of the carrier before we start coming in but I can already see the meatball. Alright, so there we have the destroyer off to the right. And now would be a good time to turn in. We're going to do a really shallow turn. That is one thing that is the same with both of these aircraft, both the A6 and the EA6B. The visibility, the forward visibility is excellent, so I can only imagine how much fun they had landing this sucker. Alright, right here is good. Quick outside view, just to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Oh, uh, look at that. That is a beautiful lineup, folks. That is a beautiful lineup. Okay, let's do this. Alright, now you may notice I'm tending to track a little to the right, because of course the carrier is going forward. Whoa, and now my camera is messing up. Okay, I'm going to need to go to the inside camera here. Did not expect that to happen. Alright, what is our altitude? Uh, we're looking a little low there. Alright, I'm going to give it some gas because, um, yeah, once again, I'm a little too low here. Alright, quick outside check. Okay, this is as good as it's going to get, folks. This is as good as it's going to get. Here we go. Alright, come on, baby. Wind is kicking my ass as well. Pull up 
Just a touch, level her out. Okay, meatball looks good. We're a little low. We're a little low. Power, power. Woo! And we're in. Very nice. Very nice. Alrighty, folks. So that concludes the tale of the twins, the A6 Intruder and the EA6B Prowler. I thank you all so much for watching. I hope this was entertaining as well as educational for you. We're going to continue the Vietnam series with a few more of my favorite planes, including some of the heavies. So stay tuned for that. Um, prior to that, you will be seeing more episodes of Alianis and myself flying out west. I believe we left off in St. Louis, so next week's episode we'll pick up there and you know, see where we end up. Of course, the other series will be on as well, so you'll see some more Star Wars, you'll see some more uh, Fallout 4 and all that good stuff. And dude, you better get the hell out of my way. See, this is how sailors get sucked up into the engine, right here. That mother effer ain't moving. <laughs> Alright, well, we're safe and sound, and our crewman is no worse for wear, so we're going to go ahead and turn everything off, and we'll open up the canopy. And that should be it for me. So, if I don't talk to you before then, I sincerely hope you all have a very Merry Christmas, or whichever holiday it is that you celebrate, if you do celebrate any. Hope you all had a chance to see Star Wars. I highly recommend it. It is freaking awesome. Alright, so that's it for me from Vietnam in the A6 Intruder and the EA6B Prowler, the twins. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And ciao!